Northrop's T-38 Talon was the world's first supersonic trainer aircraft. First flown in 1959, it has helped more than 50,000 pilots from all over the world earn their wings. The exemplary aircraft has also achieved numerous records and was flown by several renowned pilots in the 1960s, such as Navy Captain and NASA astronaut Wally Shearer and the legendary Jacqueline Cochran. The so-called Speed Queen flew a T-38 in 1961 and set eight world records involving speed, altitude, and distance. Its success derived from the aircraft's outstanding maneuverability, handling, and excellent cockpit visibility for the two-man crew with a sleek design and engines that allowed it to reach a top speed of 857 miles per hour and an impressive rate of climb of 33,600 feet per minute. Surprisingly, the type design did not catch much attention at first and had to prove itself in the eyes of the aviation industry before making a splash. The Age of Jet Aircraft During the last days of World War II, the Allied forces were bewildered by the latest German innovations, especially the Messerschmitt 262, or the Stormbird, the world's first jet-powered fighter aircraft. After the conflict ended, the victors launched their jet aircraft programs and designs with the help of captured German scientists who were promised freedom if they cooperated. Jet fighter aircraft were growing in size and complexity as the arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union was in full swing in the early 1950s. Moreover, the Korean War showcased the true power of jet-powered aircraft as they achieved incredible supersonic speeds. Nevertheless, producing this new type of powerful aircraft was not easy. Technology evolved rapidly, and making jet fighters that were faster, more potent, and more reliable than their predecessors was not affordable. It was inevitable. Jets had to keep growing and becoming more expensive to catch up with the Soviets, who in turn were just as worried about the Americans. The United States Air Force was highly uncertain about the near future, and funding from the Department of Defense was limited. Consequently, the U.S. government began looking for a high-performance, lightweight fighter that could become an affordable option for friendly nations that were part of the military assistance program. While the USAF debated the issue, Northrop Corporation began working on a new fighter program called the N-102 Fang. The design was noteworthy, as it featured swept-back wings and a downward canopy. Still, the project was cancelled because the General Electric J-79 engine that would power it weighed almost two tons and would lead to a large and expensive aircraft, precisely what the U.S. Air Force was trying to avoid. N-156 Fighter the cancellation of the N-102 Fang project by the USAF did not entirely affect Northrop, and the company decided to pursue the government's requirement to develop a lighter and more affordable aircraft for the U.S. and its allies. In 1953, Northrop began a private venture design with the expectations that it would do well in international sales. General Electric Aviation inaugurated its new small aircraft engine department the following year, and during the event, they showed Northrop engineers a new engine they had recently built. The small, light, and powerful engine was designated J-85, and the prototype weighed over 500 pounds and could produce 2,500 pounds of thrust. Moreover, if an afterburner was added to the smaller J-85, it could generate more than 3,500 pounds of thrust. It was then that the Northrop Vice President of Engineering, Edgar Schmood, had an idea. He'd taken part in the design of the North American P-51 Mustang and the F-86 Sabre. And with the support of Chief Engineer Velko Gasich, Joe Talley, and George Gaius, the team pitched a new aircraft design that would make use of two General Electric J-85 engines. The model was known as the small twin-engine N-156 fighter. The company began working on the project in 1954 with the objective of making it a supersonic fighter jet that could be launched from U.S. Navy escort carriers. However, the organization decided not to pursue the program but Northrop kept working on the N-156 as an inside project for the export market. Still, all the work was not in vain. Sometime later, the U.S. Air Force issued a request for a supersonic trainer that could replace the well-rounded 1940s Lockheed T-33 Shooting Star. The company continued developing two versions of the N-156, 
but soon gave priority to the USAF's trainer and submitted their design. As such, Northrop's adapted N-156 had to compete against North American's two-seat F-100 Super Sabre. The T-38 Talon Trainer The North American F-100 Super Sabre was a close competitor, but it was far from perfect, and it was not capable of recovering from a spin. Still, the requirements were adapted to favor it, given North American's close relationship with the Air Force as a top contractor. Nevertheless, the design was not good enough to tower over the M156. Northrop engineers made sure to compare even the slightest details and performance capabilities of both aircraft and pinpoint them to the Air Force contractors. The U.S. Air Force declared Northrop the winner in June of 1956 because of this effort, awarding the company a contract to produce three prototypes. The N156 trainer was soon designated T-38. While it was in development, the U.S. Air Force kept employing its Lockheed T-33 shooting stars and even used the Cessna T-37 tweet for training purposes. However, this aircraft was a small, subsonic, economical twin-engine jet trainer, and the Air Force was still interested in Northrop's supersonic one. The first prototype, codenamed YT-38, flew for the first time on April 10, 1959. It was then cleared for production in early 1961, following more test flights, through which minor issues were resolved, and the supersonic trainer officially entered service on March 17th at Randolph Air Force Base in Texas. The T-38 could fly at Mach 1.3, or 858 miles per hour. In addition, it had an outstanding service ceiling of 55,000 feet and could pull 7 Gs. According to the Air and Space Museum, the T-38 Talon could take off with as little as 2,300 feet of runway and climb to almost 30,000 feet in less than a minute. Meanwhile, its approximate range was 1,140 miles. Design The Talon followed the general form and function of the F-5 and F-20 aircraft lines. It also retained aspects of its predecessor, the N-156. It had a length of 46.4 feet, a height of 12.9 feet, and a width of 25.3 feet, and it had a maximum takeoff weight of 12,093 pounds. The National Air and Space Museum notes that the T-38 had a streamlined fuselage and a coke bottle shape that derived from the area rule developed by Richard Whitcomb. Meanwhile, the cockpit was air-conditioned and pressurized, and used tandem seats for the instructor and the student. Each was equipped with rocket-powered ejection seats, and both locations had excellent all-around visibility. The flight control surfaces were powered by two independent hydraulic systems, and most core components were easy to access for ease of maintenance. Plus, most of them were at waist-high levels. A short nose cone sat ahead of the cockpit, and the fuselage spine started at the base of the single vertical tail fin, featuring a tapering shape that was clamped at its tip. The tailplanes were low-mounted, just like the small area main planes, while the engines were installed side by side and aspirated through intakes at the fuselage sides. Another significant feature was the traditional Northrop tricycle landing gear with a steerable nose wheel. The T-38 carried no weapons, but some of its variants featured provisions for practice bomb dispensers. Some of them were equipped with a gun sight and could carry rockets, bombs, and even a gun pod. Variants and Milestones The Northrop T-38 Talon was produced from 1961 until 1972, and over 1,190 were built. More than 70,000 pilots from different countries have earned their wings, thanks to the reliable trainer aircraft. The Talon is currently employed by the U.S. Air Force, the German Air Force, Turkey, Portugal, South Korea, and other allied nations. The USAF Strategic Air Command began to employ the T-38 in 1978, until it was deactivated following the end of the Cold War. Still, the T-38s were used for the Accelerated Co-Pilot Enrichment Program as proficiency aircraft for B-52 bombers, SR-71 Blackbirds, U-2 spy planes, Boeing KC-135s, and several others. The Air Force Global Strike Command still uses the T-38s as proficiency aircraft for the latest American fighters, such as the F-16 Fighting Falcon, the F-15 Strike Eagle, the F-22 Raptor, and the F-35 Lightning II. In addition, NASA still operates over 35 T-38 aircraft, 
using them to train astronauts. Most are stored at Ellington Field in Houston, Texas. One of the latest variants of the T-38 Talon was introduced in 2001, the T-38C. The model was fitted with new avionics systems and major engine components. And as part of the avionics upgrade program, some of the upgrades included a glass cockpit with integrated heads-up and avionics displays. With these modifications, the Air Force hopes it can extend the operational service of the T-38 for almost another decade with the Pacer Classic program. Nevertheless, the Air Force still launched the TX program in 2010 to replace the T-38 trainer. The project was part of a joint venture between BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Korean Airspace Industries, and other well-known companies. The Boeing and Saab Red Hawk was declared the winner in 2018 and is expected to gradually replace the Talon in the following years. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned.